It is now my pleasure to introduce our student speaker representing our graduating JD students. Alexandra Arnold graduated from Dartmouth College in 2010 with a degree in molecular biology and no plans to attend law school. She spent the next several years working as a management consultant for the biotechnology and pharmaceutical in industries until, as her father likes to say, she became disenchanted with the mission. After first considering pursuing an MBA, Alexandra realized that earning a law degree would provide her with the strongest foundation to work on the issues she cares about. Alexandra is particularly interested in how our criminal laws impact public health. Her commitment to and her grasp of these issues is evident in a July 2018 opinion piece she wrote titled, Massachusetts Death by Dealer Bill is a Wrong Opioid Policy. In it, she argues, quote, the United States has been trying to arrest its way out of substance abuse and addiction for decades. And today's crisis attests to the futility of that approach. If our policymakers are serious about ending the opioid epidemic in the Commonwealth, they need to shift their focus from policing and prisons to people and public health, end quote. Over the last two summers, Alexandra has interned with the Drug Policy Alliance and the National Advocates for Pregnant Women. And after graduation, she will spend a year clerking for the Honorable Ralph Gantz, Chief Justice of the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court. Please join me in welcoming Alexandra to the podium. Thank you, Dean Anuachi Willig. Good morning, esteemed faculty and staff, proud parents and partners, extended families, friends, and incredibly bored siblings. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today, for celebrating with us as we complete our transformation into people who refer to cars as motor vehicles, begin sentences with wherein, and sprinkle Latin into casual conversation in Terralia. I imagine it hasn't been easy, so thank you for putting up with us and for supporting us these last three years. We couldn't have done it without you. Class of 2019, it is an interesting time to be graduating from law school. A lot of things have changed since we first walked into the law tower, and they're big changes, lasting ones that are likely to reverberate throughout our careers as attorneys. But before we start thinking about the challenges that may face us in the future, I want to take a moment to reflect on the past, on what we've learned in our years here at BU Law. And that, incidentally, is something that the non-lawyers in the audience may have some questions and concerns about. Perhaps some of you have already had an experience like this. You turn to your soon-to-be attorney partner and say, hey babe, you took contracts, right? Would you mind looking over this contract for me? and your partner who is literal days away from being able to practice law goes ashen and begins to stutter, you know, I, I, I never actually saw a, a contract in contracts. <laughs> it's called law school, so I can understand why you might mistakenly believe that what we learn here is the law, but that, as it turns out, we learn for a supplemental fee the summer after graduation. <laughs> what we actually learn in law school is how to think like lawyers. What does that even mean? A prominent legal theorist described the 1L professor's task like this. He said, the hardest job of the first year is to lop off your common sense, to knock your ethics into temporary anesthesia, your view of social policy, your sense of justice, to knock these out of you along with woozy thinking along with ideas all fuzzed along their edges. You're to acquire the ability to think precisely, to analyze coldly, to work within a body of materials that is given, and to manipulate the machinery of the law. To think like a lawyer, to be trained as we've been trained, means analytical rigor, the skill to recognize and draw distinctions, to advocate either side of an issue logically and persuasively, whether or not one agrees with or believes in the position that one is advancing. And that, I think, is risky. We may mistakenly come to believe that thinking like a lawyer means adopting a kind of moral neutrality, that being a lawyer means responding to human situations as, and experiences as lawyers rather than as human beings. I remember sometime during 1L fall, it must have been November or December because there was snow on the ground. 
I was walking in my neighborhood, and I noticed that someone hadn't shoveled the snow in front of their building. But instead of thinking, gosh, I hope nobody slips, the first thing that popped into my head was, well, that right there is potential liability and tort. <laughs> Folks, that was after less than one full semester of learning how to think like a lawyer. And over the last two years, I've participated in a number of competitions where I found myself arguing both sides of a variety of issues with some degree of success. I have to tell you, it gave me pause. I wondered, have I really become someone so stripped of personal convictions that I can convincingly argue any side of a question? Thinking like a lawyer can be fun. Cases become games, puzzles that we can solve, spot the issue, identify the right law, draw the best distinction. But on the other side of those puzzles are people, scared people, vulnerable people, people who have problems that they don't know how to solve, who are relying on us. And as it happens, corporations are people too. <laughs> Everything we do revolves around other people. Every sterile appellate decision that we read over the last three years was the story of someone's life that was changed by those proceedings. And as we begin practicing, we need to remember that. Here, we've gained tools to help people and to harm them. It's our responsibility to use them mindfully. But of course, you already know that. In our clinics and externships and pro bono work, we've seen the real world implications of the abstract policies we studied in class. We went to Logan Airport to provide legal support to travelers caught in the confusion following the executive orders on immigration enforcement. We traveled to the border to ensure that migrants understood the process for seeking asylum in the United States. We've helped launch startups and protected innovative research, assisted community members with their taxes, represented tenants facing foreclosure, advocated for victims of violence, defended indigent criminal defendants, and so much more. And we've had incredible professors who've tried to instill in us the practice not only of applying legal rules, but also of considering who those rules serve, of questioning their fairness and their justice, of observing the spirit of the law as well as its letter. In just a few short months, we'll be prosecutors and public defenders, lobbyists and legislators, corporate transactional lawyers and litigators, and public interest advocates. We'll have the opportunity and the power to change people's lives, for better or for worse. So as we immerse ourselves in practice, I hope it's those lessons that stick. That BU Law is, for us, the place where we learn both to think like lawyers and to be critical of that way of thinking. Where we saw from the examples of our professors and our peers in robes today that an analytical mind pairs best with a caring heart. Class of 2019, congratulations. The world looks a bit different than it did when we started, and we have a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm honored and excited to begin it alongside all of you. Let's get started.